New details raise further questions about President Trump's pick to head the Veterans Affairs Department. John Yang explores some of the sticking points. Judy, today the White House stepped up its defense of Dr. Ronnie Jackson. Press Secretary Sarah Sanders said he had been fully checked out before President Trump chose him, even as shocking new developments emerged today. We're now joined by Senator Sherrod Brown, a Democrat of Ohio who's a member of the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee. Senator Brown, thanks for joining us. I know late this afternoon the, the Senate, uh, the committee's Democratic summary of what they've been told about the allegations against Dr. Jackson emerged. What to you is the most troubling on it? What's the most surprising on it? Well, I, I, would, I would emphasize it may have been the Democratic staff putting this out, but it's the bipartisan move by the committee, the Republican chair, to delay the hearing on Dr. Jackson and Admiral Jackson because they want to know, too, um, what exactly happened. And I, Senator Tester, the senior Democrat, and I are, and others in the committee are, at, are talking a lot to individual Senate Republicans of what they're hearing and what they're thinking. Perhaps the most troubling, I mean, the most troubling thing to me is that the White House prized loyalty and likability of Dr. Jackson more than they did the ultimate issue here, and that is what's best for veterans. And this started with firing Dr. Shulkin because Dr. Shulkin opposed the privatization, the politicization of the, of the VA coming out of the White House. I, I think probably the most troubling single thing about Dr. Jackson, and this is corroborated by enough people, 23 people have come forward, military or former military, talking to us. That, um, that he was so inebriated one night, he, we went out and, or one day and, and wrecked a government car, uh, things like that. The president clearly didn't ask questions about, his staff didn't, before he was nominated. And this just creates chaos at, at the most important job here is how do you take care of nine million veterans? And they have injected this chaos into the whole upper management of the, of the VA and there is, you know, there is, it is a leaderless institution now, a leaderless agency that takes care of 9 million veterans. I should point out that Dr. Jackson told reporters at the White House this afternoon that he denies wrecking a car, uh, and he also said that that's easy to check and he's moving forward with his nomination, he said. Uh, there was also allegations in the, uh, in the summary that he was uh, prescribing Percocet, an opioid, uh, or, to uh, people on the White House staff, and that they were having trouble tracking it in the White House medical office. Yeah, I, I mean, we hear all these things. We... We see this corroborated by a number of people, again, 23 people, military, uh, active duty or retired military or veterans who have moved on to other things, um, have spoken about these issues, this whole host of issues. Um, they have credibility. We want to get to the bottom of it. But what, what's clear here is the White House, first they fired Dr. Shulkin because they, they wanted to politically, they wanted to politicize the VA and privatize it, and the president seems to go along with the Koch brothers and others against what every veterans group that's spoken out about it says, and the veterans groups, whether they're the Legion, the VFW, the AMVETS, the disabled American vets, the paralyzed vets, all of them oppose privatization of VA because they know that people on top that make money from this private company, but veterans health services and morale at the agency always suffers when you do that. So you start with that, but now then, the, then there's more chaos injected here because there's no backup plan. And the, the, I mean, I talk to people that work at the Cincinnati VA or the Dayton VA or the Chillicothe or Cleveland VAs or the community-based outpatient clinics in Lima and Mansfield, Ohio. And they tell you, we, we just want a VA that's, that's, that's got a, a stable management that does predictable things instead of this chaos with no, no end in sight as Dr. Jackson continues to founder and people in both parties keep asking questions that the White House never asked. Well, you'd, you'd say the White House never asked. Do you have a question about the, the, are you concerns about how well the White House is vetting some of these nominees? Well, I'm concerned that they're vetting it all. I, I mean, from, from my observations up close, I've been in the White House a number of times. I've watched them up close. I've seen their nomination process uh, it, up pretty close. I mean, I'm not at the White House watching them do the nominations, but what happens is the president finds, has an idea of somebody, usually based on likability and loyalty, loyalty to the president, not necessarily to the people this cabinet agency person might, um, you know, the person they might serve, like the veterans. He likes them, he finds them loyal, he says he wants to nominate them, and they move without 
staff say, wait a minute, Mr. President, like they always say in every other White House, wait a minute, we need to make a lot of calls to find out his background, if there's any problems, if he's had management issues or substance abuse issues or performance issues. These 23 people we talked to, apparently none or very few of them were ever called by the White House. Quickly, Senator, Dr. Sure. Jackson says he wants a hearing so he can address these uh, these these allegations. Do you think he should deserve a confirmation hearing so he can speak? I mean, sure. I, I just want something to happen quickly, and I want to get this resolved. I think, though, the deal should be, if there's a hearing, that the president should have a backup plan in place now, somebody that really is well vetted that could come and run the VA. Senator Brown, uh, Sherrod Brown of Ohio, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much.